Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. Now, I am um, going to do another video in the Start to Finish series on my blush color journal. Um, because this is such an auspicious occasion, I even cleaned my mat, or as well as it gets these days. Of course, because I'm right-handed, I always seem to do my cutting over here, and that's where all the the grooves are. Anyway, if you know a fail, an idiot-proof um, uh, method for cleaning a mat, I'd be I'd welcome uh, hearing some suggestions. I use. Um, hand sanitizer every so often, because of course we all have gallons of that, don't we? Um, as well as I, I didn't use the hand sanitizer this time, <coughs> excuse me, but I did use uh, baby wipes. Anyway, let's get to it. I, uh, because you had asked that this be a start to finish uh, series, that's what I'm doing. So we're keep we're gonna keep <coughs> <coughs> sorry we're going to keep plugging away at this. Now um presumably this video will appear after the one where I showed you um some cover options for as we know I have more than enough uh, <laughs> stuff to make more than one journal. So th this and this and this lovely stuff um, were items that were sent to me by the lovely and generous uh, Kim Newberg. If you haven't checked her out, please go and subscribe and like, and you know the routine. Anyway, I told you in the last video that I found, I went and looked through my hundreds <laughs> of um, book covers, and I decided on this one. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I can review the sizes here. Nine and a quarter by almost six, <coughs> which means that a regular piece of paper folded in half is going to uh, work perfectly and there's you know even a bit of room to add trim and so on so when I showed the book to you I had kind of ragged edges here so I thought you know in preparation for doing this why don't I just of course not cutting on this uh, this thing here why don't I just cut that and neaten it up so of course I was doing that and I kept running into a problem right about here. Well, you think I didn't cut through it? Uh, rookie mistake. I should have been more careful. Now again, I just want to reassure you that this is not at all, this whole paper making, journal making, paper crafting, um, um, venture is not something where, you know, it's not life and death. So it's not like, you know, I amputated the wrong limb or left the sponge in the body cavity or something like that. It's always something that can be fixed. In this case, it's not going to matter one tiny bit because I've decided that I'm going to use this as the cover. Now, in a haul video, who knows when, I showed you that I bought this Fabri-Tac spray when we were in the States. Now, I assumed that, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try this, obviously. But I also assumed that there'd be a skull and crossbones on here. And it would be one of those with all the warnings and all, you know, using a well-ventilated area. Well, it says water-based, non-toxic. There's no skull and crossbones. There's no uh, warning whatsoever uh, other than uh, not to saturate the fabric. So that is great. 
but I'm not using this today anyway, simply because this is decorative here. Why would I want to have my signature threads showing? So I will be doing, um, I'm, when I glue the fabric on, it will be after the signatures have already been sewn in. So this boo-boo here will be covered up, as will this, whatever this stain is here. Now I did sort of, you know, scrape away at it a bit. I did get some of it off. I don't know what it is. Again, that will all be covered. So all is well in the world. Now, I, because of course, most of us can't remember one thought uh, very long whatsoever especially if it involves numbers so I have a piece of paper where I have done my measurements and I'll just show you what I've done um, the first set of numbers nine by five and a half um, and actually a person could always with the width do times two and we know that that's 11 because that is the overall size of the paper, you know, folded in half, so 11 or bigger. Um, anyway, okay, so I am measuring, and these end papers are pristine, but they'll probably get covered in some way or whatever, decorated, virtually, well, I guess it's a hair, I mean, to, if we were splitting an atom here, it is 9 and 15 sixteenths. I'm calling it nine. Although, you know what? I'm going to put this symbol to tell myself less than nine inches. And then I'm measuring from here, my clean edge, to um, where this ends. So five and a half, roughly. And then I measured this and I thought oh that's one and three quarters no I measured it from this dip to this dip and I don't know how well you can see that and I'm thinking oh that's one and five eighths and that's what I wrote down and I also measured the height top to bottom nine and a quarter so following the carpentry uh rules <laughs> of measure twice and cut once I just to be on the safe side made this one and three quarters so let me show you that one and three quarters is too too wide however I can cut it down so my original thought that one and five eighths would be the perfect size is going to be correct because Frankly, if I, and, and see, you know, nothing is quite perfect in the world because down here at the bottom, it seems to fit better than up here. Um, so the moral of the story with this is I'd be, if I was going to err one way or the other, it is better to make it narrower, even if it's a wee bit too narrow, than to make it too wide because, of course, that is going to bind and interfere and it's not going to close properly and that's going to smack off that would be like having flashing red lights that say beginner 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 and we don't want to be beginners at least not for long um so i'm going to trim that down to one or five eighths but before i do that or as i'm doing that i will tell you that i have a lot of uh cardboard this was some sort of packaging. I have the, the back covers from paper pads, um, all kinds of stuff in a variety of weights. So as I was looking for a piece um, to try to figure out, well, okay, what am I cutting my spine out of? <clears throat> I, I'm, there are two things that I'm keeping in mind. Number one, what is the right weight approximately? And because I have so many choices, I can keep looking until I find what I want. If you, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't been saving every piece of cardstock and cardboard that's come into your life for the last three years, 
you may not have as many choices. So what you can always do is with a thinner one, you can double or triple it up. And I have had to do that in the past. So, you know, that's not the end of the world. And I also want to, I mean, we can't cheat on the height. We don't want to piece anything together, I guess, unless you were gluing multiple layers together. So, uh, of course, Murphy's Law, this was just, if I would have cut it this way, it's just, it was just a smidge too short. A smidge too short isn't good enough. So I had to cut into it the long way. So I'm, when I was looking through the scraps, and I'm just talking about the ones that are nearest to me, I have many more. I'm looking for the right weight and the right size. There were, there were bigger pieces, maybe there were better pieces, um, but you don't want to cut a dinky little um, spine out of a nice big piece of cardboard that maybe could grow up to be a journal cover. So, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking all of this, maybe I've just told you the, the secret to the mystery of life. Either way, that's how I do it. So, um, and I know I've done this before, but let's do it again because there are new people and, and sometimes it never hurts to see it again or, you know, that line about when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So maybe you've seen videos like that in the past or haven't, um, but you weren't ready. You weren't ready to take the plunge. You weren't ready to, to give this a try. So we're going to pretend it's one of those days. I think that one thing that makes this um, job of making a template, first of all, let me do the first and maybe one of the more important things, whoa, is to put a T for top. And that way, I know that I always have to have this spine piece in this position, otherwise things are going to go um, astray askew. So one and five inch. Uh, oh, geez, I almost missed that step. Let me cut that down or this really will be a, oh darn it. This grid doesn't show eighths, but I'm going to eyeball it because. So an one and five eighths is obviously going to be halfway between one and a half and one and three quarters. So I'm going to I have this lined up on my grid, and then I'm going to center it top and bottom, eyeballing it, trying to make it as even as I possibly can, and then I'm going to bite the bullet and cut. Now, of course, with a dumb number, like 1 and 5 eighths, we'd know that doing normal math would be might cause our heads to explode. So that is, it's in a case like this that a centering ruler is absolutely um, worth the price of investing in it. So <coughs> one and five eighths is, a, is the spine width. I kind of was looking at this thinking, okay, what is a reasonable number of signatures? I know that I, in particular, have learned that for me, it's better, it's, the math is easier, the, the whole process is easier if I go with an odd number of signatures. Um, I could do five, but then I thought, well, maybe this time I'm going to go with three. Some of my paper is a bit heavier. Um, it, there's going to be uh, like you know lace and trim and and envelopes and whatnot. So I want a little more breathing space for my signatures. And of course, if it turns out that I have more than will fit, uh, I know I'm I'm telling you right now, I will have more content than will fit in this journal or in the cardboard one cardboard cover I showed you 
or in the slow stitched cover I showed you. So we've established that. So what I'm going to do first of all, I, oh, you know what? Dare I, Teresa, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the five hole pamphlet stitch. I'll do it on something maybe less um, critical. Not that every project isn't worth my best effort, but um, I just don't want to risk it on this one because I haven't done it successfully before. <clears throat> Let's use the centering ruler. Well, no. I will just do what I need to do with this one. I am going to, you know what, there's probably no way um, to avoid erasing or multiple lines. So let's just do it the, the easier way. <coughs> because I will have a variety of page heights, I have the choice of moving the shorter things up or down to make sure that they're captured by at least two of the three um, ho uh, holes and, and threads. So I'm going to just eyeball where I think, you know, in the top to bottom measurement where I think the center is roughly. And it's probably going to be up. So what you do with a centering ruler is you sort of slide it back and forth until the number of lines on this side and on this side match. So we've got a core, we've got an eighth and that, we've got an eighth and that. Okay, so of course it isn't totally, totally perfect, but it is pretty darn close. I'm going to make a mark there. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same. I'm again, I'm eyeballing. I because this is a fairly tall spine, I'm going to try to sort of eyeball about an inch and a half from the top. So maybe that's about there. And again, I'm going to line this up to the best of my ability and make a mark. And I'm going to line this up to the best of my ability and make a mark. So what I would then do is draw a line. Whoops. Sorry if I move too low here. I'm trying to not have my head in the in the uh, shot. Okay, so just for the heck of it, let's measure an inch and a half from, well, we'll do it in two places so that the line stays straight. An inch and a half and an inch and a half. That way when I draw a line, a horizontal line, it's going to in fact be uh, level and not slightly off. I guess I could even do, do it that way. Okay, so we're gonna connect these two marks. And again, I'm sure that this whole uh, process is repulsive to some of you because you think, well, we do call them junk journals. Frankly, if you've been paying attention, I've pretty well dropped the word junk. I talk about making handmade journals because as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter what the contents are. It is handmade. It's a journal. It's a work of art. So I'm not going to denigrate the value of it by um, um, calling, you know, using the word junk. So at this point, 
we know that this, where this intersects here and here. Oh, I guess I should be doing my mark down the middle too. So what did I say? This is nine and a quarter. So we know that that is uh, nine and a half plus a bit. So let's call it nine and five eighths. And let's call it nine and, I mean, <laughs> let's call it four and five eighths. Oh, and you can see I wasn't very close to being centered there. Okay. This paper, this cardboard is a wee bit glossy. Okay. So we know that that on this thing, that's where my center signature is going to be. So now I pull out my centering ruler again. I line it up with that dot and on that line. And I decide that, okie dokie, I'm going to have my signatures. I only need, I only need to split the difference between here and here, like with one. So I could... I could actually use my centering ruler between there and figure out it exactly. Or I could just say, I'm going to go, see, I think a quarter inch might be a bit close because then I've got all that surplus. So I'm going to go a little bit further apart. Um, so if I went three eighths of an inch, yeah, that's pretty well, that's pretty well perfect. So I'm making my mark on the line at the 3 8 inch mark. And the 3 8 inch mark. One, two, three. Same thing in the middle. Oops, get it on the line. Three-eighths of an inch and three-eighths of an inch. Boy, I cheated on that line there. Three-eighths of an inch. Three-eighths of an inch. Oh, my goodness. Now, this is going to be covered with fabric, so I can even make darker marks here. Mind you, that could have been an error in judgment. What if my fabric isn't? Oh, you know what? I could look at this, determine how much I actually have, and see if I can afford to use some of this fabric without ruining, you know, the chances for turning the, you know, leaving enough to, to make um, a cover. Okay, so that is that. Now, I will probably use my crocodile. Um, crocodile, what is it? What is the? I can't remember its, its other. Bra uh, brain fart. Um, my doohickey for making the holes. Now, I can't do that just yet because it would be pointless to do it before I have this thing covered with fabric. And uh, when I cover it with fabric, I will make, I'll punch the holes because then there's no stabbing around trying to get it through a hole that's too small. And that will work beautifully. In fact... I guess I could decide which is going to be my right side, which is going to be my wrong side. And of course, I also don't have my signatures yet determined. So I basically just wanted to show you this to this point uh, in case you're, you're working on a project of your own and you were hoping to get some pointers on, on um, making a template. So this thing is going to fit nicely in here. 
top to bottom, you know, because there is a little give side to side, I will have to obviously make sure that that works when the time comes. When I select my fabric to cover this, this spine, I'm going to obviously make it wide enough. So, you know, maybe I make it... Um, <clears throat> Maybe it would be easier with this one. <clears throat> I could make it three inches wide. And that's how much excess I would have. I could go, you know, three and a half and I'd have a bit more. Um, again, sometimes before the actual gluing in off the covered spine... And that's obviously when the signatures are attached. The whole idea being that we're not going to be cutting through. Um, I mean, we're not going to be having the, the strings visible here. Uh, no, sorry. We will have the strings visible there, but they will not be visible in the final product because that quilt piece is going to cover. So... What I was saying is once you've covered your spine with a piece of fabric, knowing that it's going to extend into this into these covers, you kind of have to figure out, well, if I'm adding a pocket, you know, do I want it glued on top of that bit of fabric there? Do I want to be off to the side so the fabric is visible all the way? <clears throat> so some of those decisions, again, it, there's no right or wrong. There's no um, uh, preferred method, probably. It's, it's a matter of personal taste and personal choice. So what I'm going to do, I think, is stop here move myself over to where my papers are. And now that I've determined that this will be a cover, that cardboard um, packaging cover will be a cover, and I should also figure out what the heck I'm doing with that slow stitch piece of fabric. Um, then I can actually start dividing up my papers into this for this journal, this for this journal, this for this journal. And, um, you know, and then further break it down into which papers are going into each journal. So you can see that there's a lot on the go here. There is also, um, it's, you know, it, but it's also times three. You know, if you were doing only one journal project, um, you'd have a third of the work. Now, I kind of think that, you know, once I've got all that stuff out, once I've been sewing and folding and, and embellishing and so on, that it's kind of worth my while to do them all at once. Which reminds me, I also... How big is this piece? I also... Now, it needs to be squared up. Maybe I should do that right now while I'm talking. Um, it, um, I also have some pages that I've folded for a tall skinny. Now, I guess I can see right off the bat that this... Well, let's square it up and see what we're actually talking about. So which is the most straight side here? You can't necessarily go by the rows of stitching either. This is made where it would be good to pull in one of these. Okay, the most important part here, or the most desirable part here, would be the, the part with the quilting. So we've got more here than here. So let's start out by... Now, does that look straight? Not exactly. But we have to we have to start somewhere. When everything is slightly out, you have to start somewhere. So because 
I want to maximize, get as much out of this as I possibly can. I'm just going to line this up with this edge here and cut this little triangle off. Uh, it doesn't look like that wants to work. Do I have a rotary cutter here? Um, I thought I had my rotary cutters here. I know I kind of moved them a little further away so I don't slice myself open. Just turning my little... Um, Lazy Susan here. What the heck? Well, maybe I'll try this blade, see if it's any tougher. Um, and maybe can do the That's not doing it either. Okay, I think what I'm going to have to do... Probably have a let's just use a pencil. I'm going to make a pencil line. I'll probably have to cut this with scissors or take it to the other area where um, my uh, oh, there they are. I have two of them now that I've made the mark. Of course, see, I I try not to keep. I don't know, I replaced the blade, and I don't know what the heck I did. Like, this is not multi, this is not challenging. Why does this thing not stay in place now? So I'm just afraid to slit my wrists open. I mean, there are only a few days out of the year that I would like to slit my wrists open, but I would hate to have it happen live on camera. So let's see how sharp this baby is. Oh, of course, this skidded. Dumb thing. <sighs> yeah, you can hear that it's really cutting now. Boy, I don't have much patience for lousy tools. Or technology that <laughs> okay remove the safety shield when you want to cut um or patience for technology when it doesn't work let's get some of this stuff a little out of the way okay so we presumably now have one straight edge so maybe let's do this side next. So this now, this top edge here is now my straight side. So I, okay, I'll pull this down so you can see. I'm lining that red line up there to the best of my ability, considering that maybe I should stand up just to be sure. Okay, and again, I'm sliding it over as far as I can so that I'm cutting the absolute minimum off. I could finish that off with scissors, I guess, but it's, I don't know if that was extra thick there because of an intersection with that point of the design. So not quite as beautiful as... Okay, now we have two straight edges. So, well, maybe let's do this one just for the heck of it. 
And of course, when I have a bigger piece like this to cut off, I'm not about to throw that in the garbage. I will, again, stand up to align this. Um, I will save that and use it. That could be almost a cluster in itself. Now that cut nice and smoothly. Okay, let's add that to my bits. Um, now, pause for a moment and measure. So at the narrowest end, it's nine and three quarters. Um, nine and three quarters. Here it is ten, so... Well, let's cut it. I was going to say maybe I could have it, um, you know, try to salvage that in some way, but I guess not. So there's a wow in it, of course, but that's okay. I'm very grateful that Kim sent this stuff my way. And again... That is where I'm going to, uh, where I'll keep this, because there's a bit of something there. Okay. Now, it just occurred to me as I was measuring that, that I could make this work for my tall skinny. I just had some paper here. I'll just reach. And this is just... Uh, you know, sort of copy paper. So it's a hair too tall, but that's fine. That would be sweet as well. Okay, so what I can do here. Now, the beauty of something like this is that it is, well, other than maybe zigzagging around the edge, it is perfect and ready to go as is. There's some heft to it, but it's soft. Um, there's nothing ugly on this side that needs to be disguised in any way. Um, so what I can do, pull in that paper again, you can see that a single a single piece of paper is pretty well right to the edge. Now, unless I want to trim every sheet of paper or fold things in to make side pockets or whatever, uh, that can get kind of old pretty fast. So what I can do here is add something. Now, I just told you that the inside is pretty well finished off. But what if I added, and of course, I carried it away. Uh, well, this isn't, well, this is just within reach. It's not the right choice. But suppose I added, you know what? A trim like this might not be, the, might not be so bad because this is clearly a finished edge. I could sew this onto the edge here which would still look pretty darn nice inside. And I have the benefit off that fringe. And it automatically makes my cover wider. And even if I only did it on, see what I would do is I would attach it to this leading edge. So this would be my front cover. I would attach it. Uh, I don't want the sewing. Do I want the sewing line to show? I guess if I used my, you know, light pink thread, it would be fine. And it would help to, to close this up. So, okay, let's pretend that this was stitched on. Whoops. 
I mean, it's going to be impossible for me to hold this. I would do it on this leading edge, <coughs> excuse me, of the front cover. I would then fold it, perhaps not right in dead center of this fabric piece, but cheat a bit so that um, the fringe extends the dimension just at the one side. Or if I had a narrower braid, and I might, I could also um, add it on this other side. And this is something that was just kicking around here because I thrifted, I just did a thrift video before this one. And this bit was in a grab bag of uh, ribbons. Okay, so let's pretend. Now that would be pretty plush, wouldn't it? So, mind you, it would be kind of impossible to see in this state of the project where one thing ends and the other begins because, of course, I'm just faking it for you. It would make for a pretty uh, lush <laughs> edge. That could be the answer to my, to my tall skinny problem. What I should probably do though, first of all, is maybe with a, a narrow zigzag, secure all these edges just for a little more stability, help square it off even more. And then, because even if I add trim on this side and this side, I still have an open edge top and bottom. And that would look dumb. Now, I could also use, but I don't think I'd like the look of that. Another option to enclose this would be to use some pink or white bias tape. However, I don't think I want to combine those elements. So, okay, that's that. I don't know about you, but I think I have a plan now. Okay, I'm going to uh, quit here because I have some sewing to do. I will, uh, of course, be back once I have done some more preparatory work and gotten to the stage where I can um, show you what I do or what I intend to do with the pages and um, dividing up what I, you know, all my potential uh, journal pages into the three projects and then further dividing them down into how individual signatures would look. So I'm going to stop there because I have stuff to do. I got people to see, places to go and stuff to do. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, if you are liking what you see here, and my somewhat unusual delivery, then by all means, please subscribe, please like, please comment. Please, please, please. Okay, bye.